I'm going to be talk, telling a little bit of the story of Joseph today. And uh, I wanted to start out, uh, instead of telling the story of Joseph, I'm going to start by telling the story of Annalise. Okay. I didn't, She's like, what? <laughs> I, didn't, uh, I didn't beat this up because uh, you were here. But um, the kind of the title of my message or the title of this, this uh, thing is, this sharing time is uh, living the dream. And uh, my daughter, when she was young, she had a dream oh, no. of becoming an actress, oh, okay. <laughs> moving to Hollywood and becoming famous. So yeah. that set me on a course of going to many talent shows, many terrible band, uh, performances <laughs> choir performances ensemble performances and many other other performances uh, getting up at zero period to take her to all of her zero period classes that she did every day probably just to torment me since i am not a morning person and uh, fortunately she started driving when she got older and could take herself but uh, <laughs> uh, she had a dream and Unfortunately, she had a father. We don't know. The sound over here to the right? The copy kind of growling or something. Yeah. Yeah. She had a dream, and unfortunately, she had a father who was well known as the destroyer of hopes and dreams. And uh, I brought all of her dreams down to reality and uh, said, No, no, you're not special, Annalise. <laughs> You're just a normal kid. <laughs> you are not special. <laughs> and uh, and I destroyed I destroyed her hopes and dreams. But uh, you know, one thing I am grateful for, and it kind of makes up you know some of the the things your kids do are like a huge blessing in your life. And the fact that Annalise is sitting here playing the piano, leading us in worship, like kind of makes some of those early mornings all seem a little bit worth it. But, uh, you know, many of us, when we were younger, we all had like just different dreams uh, that we felt like we were going to do, kind of dreams about our life, the dreams that, like, I think that, that all young people, all kids, especially real little kids, and as we get older, we kind of get a little bit more uh, taste of reality, but we have these very high dreams of our life. I know my dream was that I was going to play in the NBA. And it was obviously a very unrealistic dream that I had, but it was, it was kind of the dream that, um, that I had as like a, a little kid. But as I got older and I started going to college and started um, seeing some of the other things, seeing some of the reality and the, the possibilities that were in my life, uh, I feel like God put different other dreams in my mind or in my heart. But sometimes those dreams did not, if I look back at my life, I would say some of those dreams haven't come to full reality yet. And Joseph, I wanted to tell the story of Joseph a little bit. And Joseph, <coughs> when he was a young man, God gave him a dream. And the dream was that uh, he said he was having this dream and he was a, a stock of wheat. So, and his 12 brothers, there are also stocks of wheat and their stocks of wheat bowed down to Joseph's stocks of wheat. And he just happened to have this dream. He had two of these types of dreams where uh, basically his family members or everybody around him would bow down to him. And he told this dream and, and um, told this dream to everybody around uh, his, his brothers. He was uh, kind of the favorite child. Um, and his brothers didn't like him for that, for him being this dreamer and dreaming that he was going to somehow be in this uh, position of of greatness. And um, you know what happened in Joseph's life. So his brothers were jealous. They uh, caught him one day and, and basically sold him into slavery and um, sold him into uh, Egypt and told their, his father that he was dead. And uh, Joseph now had to go through the next 13 years wondering what happened to that dream that God had put in, into him. And you know, when life doesn't go quite like we think it's going to go, 
we start believing that the life that God had told us about or the life that we thought we would have will never come to reality anymore because too many things have just gone wrong in my life. And Joseph, he was probably, because, you know, sometimes when we read about the, the people in the Bible, we, we read about them like they're some kind of heroes of faith. They're the heroes of the Bible. They're the, you know, it's like they're not real people. But all of these people that are mentioned in the Bible are just real people. And they have the same real feelings and the same real, you know, thoughts that, that we all have. And I got to imagine that Joseph, when he was, uh, went into slavery and now he's out of his father's house, his father was a, was a wealthy, well-known, uh, you know, powerful person in his area. And he must've thought, you know, whatever dream I had, whatever God had spoken, now this thing is dead because of my circumstances and because of the things that have happened to me in life. Now the dream is dead. And, and, uh, Joseph had to live the next 13 years. I'm calling these next 13 years was the time that he was, he was actually living the dream. Now, when I was, um, <coughs> when I was, uh, uh, younger, much younger, I know it's hard to imagine, but I was much younger. I was <laughs> probably in my early twenties. And I remember I was going to work and I wasn't making great money. And I worked with uh, one of my best friends. And I remember us having some discussions about life and like, we would be like, what, you know, where do we want to be in life or where do like financially kind of talk about, Oh, I want to, I'm going to be rich. You know, kids, kids, all, everybody wants to be rich, right? What would be rich to you? What would be rich to you? And we came up with this, this um, thought or this saying that living the dream would be being able to go and buy a $5 Starbucks coffee and never think about the price. Just every day, <laughs> get a $5 cup of coffee. I don't think about the fact that I just spent $5 on coffee. Like that would, and we called that, we said that would be living the dream. And I know, uh, you know, after we had that conversation, we would say to each other every once in a while, I said, are you living the dream? <laughs> and he probably is living the dream. I'm not quite living the dream quite yet. I still think about how much it costs for a cup of coffee. But, uh, you know, we would say, you know, that's, that's somehow like living the dream that we, you know, you're kind of like on, on the easy road or whatever it is, like everything's going well for you. I'm living the dream. But uh, sometimes living the dream is actually, it looks completely different. Mm -hmm. And uh, the dream that we have for ourselves and the dream that God has uh, put in us, that's actually going to bring fulfillment in our life for two very different paths. And, uh, you know, one thing I was thinking about, this doesn't quite pertain to my, uh, what I'm saying right now, but um, just as we were, we were talking and as Mary was talking, you know, it's like, it says in the Bible that God leaves the 99 and he like goes after the one. Mm -hmm. And, you know, God will arrange so many different things that happen in your life so that he can reach that one. Like, why do I have to go through hard things in life? so that someday I can affect somebody else's life and reach that one. Mm -hmm. Like, God, why couldn't you have just done it a different way? But uh, God chooses to use each one of us in the process. Uh, it's, it's part of his purpose and his plan in their life. And I believe that God has given each one of us like a purpose and a plan for our life. For Joseph, his life was that someday he was going to save an entire nation. Someday he was going to, not just an entire nation, he was going to save almost all the nations of the world. We're all going to be saved through the life of Joseph. But he, God had to get him into the place where he actually could do that work. Like where he was at in Canaan, where he was living with his father in his father's house, he could have never saved the world through Joseph with Joseph staying in his father's house living what he calls the good life, living as this favorite child. God had to move Joseph from this place in a favor in his father's house and through circumstances that seemed cruel, through circumstances that seemed 
Like there is no way that God can be in any of this. God moved him into a place where he could bring him into a place that could actually change the whole world. And he got, he got, um, <clears throat> excuse me, he got put it into uh, Potiphar's house. He was a servant in Potiphar's house. And as Joseph began to be faithful in, in Potiphar's house, he rose to a place of prominence. Even from a place of despair that he was in, he actually rose to a place of prominence. Jamie. <laughs> All right, good. And I wanted to, um, sorry, looking at your watch like, all right, your just, 10 minutes just, is up. It just vibrated. All right. You did say it was quick in your own page once. <laughs> <laughs> so what, did I, what I wanted to challenge you guys with this today a little bit is just being faithful, I guess, in the place that you're at. And uh, you may feel like because of the circumstances of life um, that God is punishing or God is not with you. You know, one thing I love, there's one, one verse that I love in the story of, well, there's a few verses that I love in the story of Joseph. One is at the end of his life when he says, what you have meant for evil, God has meant for good. God uses all, we know in, in the New Testament says that God uses all things together for good for those who love him and call according to his purpose. It was like the plans of man cannot affect the plans of God. And God can do something uh, great in your life despite what it seems like or despite your circumstances and uh, as we are continuing to be faithful to to god i believe that he will um he will establish your plans here in proverbs 16 3 it says commit your works to the lord and your plans will be established in psalms uh, 37 3 and 6 it says trust in the lord and do good dwell in the land and cultivate faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him. <clears throat> Can I get some water? Yeah. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will do it. He will bring forth your righteousness like the dawn and your justice like the noonday. You know, uh, so many times there's things that happen in our life that are unjust. Like there's just injustice that happens in the world. And God's promise to us is that he will do the work and he will write that injustice and he will, will bring it. It says he will do it. He will bring it to pass. And he says, uh, here in Psalms, it says your justice he will bring forth your justice like the noonday. There are just three things that I'm going to um, kind of mention out of this story. And uh, three points, I guess, if there's any point to what I'm saying, but uh, three points. It says there are, or you might have to say, there are things in life that are simply out of your control. The first thing in, is that there are things in life. There are things in your life that are simply out of your control. And we have to believe that, for one, God is in control. You know, there's a, a Facebook post that I see often. I don't know if it's because I follow certain people or certain things, or, but it's a A.W. Tozer quote. And it says, um, well, it looks like things are out of control. Behind the scenes, there is a God who has not surrendered his authority, right? We have to believe that God is in control. In Joseph's life, uh, one of, I said one of the, my favorite things about the story of Joseph, one of the favorite quotes is when he's in prison and he has been forgotten about by the people who were supposed to remember him. It says, but God was with Joseph. Like, and I think like, He's in prison. Like he's in a, you know, the prisons in Egypt were certainly not nice. It was not a, a circumstance where he thought he would, he probably thought he was never going to escape, uh, escape that prison. But it says, but God was with Joseph the whole time. These 13 years as he's in captivity, as he's uh, been falsely accused, as he's now been in prison, it says, but God was with Joseph and God was with him in all of these uh, terrible circumstances. You know, when um, 
<clears throat> when when uh, Daniel, I, I was reading through the book of Daniel the other day too. So you guys remember that I, I was reading through Daniel, but with Daniel is that he was taken also into captivity. Uh, there was a few things that happened with Daniel that uh, probably could have caused him to be very bitter. Number one, he, he was a eunuch. He became a eunuch when he got taken into captivity. Probably could have made him very bitter. He was taken out of a house of royalty. Like uh, they say that Daniel was most likely um, somehow in the palace of Israel when, when uh, Israel got attacked and all these young men got taken off to go into ba Babylon. Uh, he, was, uh, in a, he was put into a foreign land. All of his freedoms, his hopes, his dreams, they were all taken from, from Daniel. And one thing that Daniel did was that he had purposed our, in his heart to stay faithful in no matter what his circumstances looked like. And he stayed faithful to God. And the same thing was with Joseph in his life, that he purposed to stay faithful to God no matter what his circumstances look, looked like. Um, now, Paul, he said he was able to say this during uh, many difficult things that were happening in his life in Philippians 4.12. says, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to be, have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation where, well, fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Uh, the second thing is, is, there is a blessing. You know, I want to say one more thing about this, about there's things in your life that are just simply out of your control. I know for my life personally that there's been certain things that have happened to me that have been completely out of my control. Like there's, there's things that happen on a daily basis that are really out of your control. And we feel often like the world is somehow against us. We feel like the world is against us because how could this happen to me? I was being faithful. Or how could, uh, how could I, this person speak this of me? It was just unjust, like some little injustice, some little, little thing that happened that was completely out of your control. But there's all, there's big circumstances that happen in all of our lives that are completely out of our control. And there is a, a time where you have to make a decision whether you're going to trust that God is in you, God is with you in this time or not. And maybe there's difficult things that you're going through. Uh, there's things at your work and there's things with your friends, there's things with your school, there's things that you're going through that seem like they're completely out of your control and they're not what you had envisioned for your life. And you, have to come to the point where you're saying, God, I have to believe that you are with me in this and that you are doing this for some purpose, that you are doing this for some reason, that you are allowing me to go through this for some greater purpose. And God allowed Joseph to go through this so that he could put him in the right place, so that he could bring about his purposes in Joseph's life. And how could he bring about the purpose that he had for Joseph unless he was able to get him into the right place. <clears throat> How could he do it? But he, God put Joseph in one of the only places he could take a slave from Canaan and put him into a place of second in command in Egypt. He put him right in Pharaoh's proximity, <clears throat> put him right in Pharaoh's dungeon put him right in the city and right in the place that he needed him to be. And I think about some things in my life that have happened to me that I feel like have been out of my control. And then I look at um, some of the, the lives or the people that I have been able to touch because of that circumstance and because of, because of what happened to me, uh, you know, uh, many of you guys know our story is that uh, me and Jamie, we got married 11 years ago and we have six kids between us. And I think of maybe some little things, but that maybe 
God allowed all this to happen and uh, these circumstances to happen. <coughs> and it allowed them to happen so that I could be involved in Jamie's life, my stepkids' life, uh, and Nick and Sarah Wydra's life. We did a, a step family thing with them for over a year where we got a chance to encourage them and, and be with them and walk through that process with them. And if God can go so far out of his way to take this one person and put them in the right place, God can go so far out of his way to take whatever circumstance that you are going through or difficult thing that you are going through so that you can affect that one person and you can affect that one thing that God wants, that God desires for you to do. We don't know all the plans. It says God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Who can understand the mind of God? Like he allows something to happen in your life. He allows you to go through something difficult. And maybe, just maybe, there's like a purpose in it. Maybe you're not going through this struggle for nothing. But that there's going to be something that good that comes out of it. And maybe you, you went through all this difficulty and then you just helped that one person's life to change. And I believe like when somebody's life changed, that's a miracle. I mean, that's like a, an important thing. That's, a, that's something that is for eternity. And that's something that's on God's heart. Just like he says, like he goes after the 99. He knew you would be okay. He knew you would get through it. He knew that the things that he has put in you will be enough to sustain you. But there's that other person that needs you, that needs your story, that needs to know that your hurt didn't ruin you. And you're going to be in, in a place that changes and affects and blesses somebody else's life that God is already preparing uh, for uh, preparing you for, uh, for God to do something great in you. And <clears throat> number two is that there is a blessing when we're walking in faithfulness. It didn't matter where Joseph was. He was in, a, uh, in Potiphar's house as a servant. Uh, he rose to the top. When he was walking in faithfulness, he rose to the top. There's a blessing that happens when we walk in faithfulness. He says he went into the prison. He was in prison and God blessed him. It says that he became uh, basically the, the person in charge of the prison. God brought a blessing in a terrible circumstances. And you know what? God brings blessing into our life when we are faithful. It says uh, in, in a few verses I have written down here today, it's, it says that when you are faithful in little, God makes you ruler over much. Mm. How can God uh, make you ruler over much? when we can't be faithful in just the little things that happen to us in life. We can't be faithful when we have to walk through uh, a small difficulty. How can God uh, entrust us with something greater? And, you know, there's a few stories in the New Testament that Jesus tells, a few parables that Jesus tells about um, talents or uh, about money, about being faithful. And he tells one story. It says that there was 10 servants and he gave them each a amount of money. I've heard the equivalent of the amount of money in this particular parable is about $5,000 in today's world. So he, he called 10 servants. He gave them his wealth and he said, go invest it for me. And it says in the Bible that it was some time before the master came back. You know, we don't know how much time, but it says, uh, and I think it says it was a long time before the master came back. But when the master came back, he asked one of the servants and he said, what did you do with the money that I gave you? And he said, well, $5,000, like in today's world, $5,000, $10,000 is maybe not all that much money. Somebody gave you money, said, here, I want you to be faithful with this. Okay. I'll invest where I'll do, I'll, I'll be faithful. 
and he gave it to him. And it says, when the master came back to his kingdom, said he had just acquired this kingdom. And he had these servants, these 10 servants that he gave money to. He came back and this, the person said, with the money that you gave me, I now have 10 times the amount. And he gave it back to us, uh, gave it to the master. And the master said, well done, you good and faithful servant. I will make you ruler over 10 cities. That's a pretty big jump from $5,000 to I will make you ruler over 10 cities. But the principle in the Bible about being faithful with the place that God has put you, there's another verse in the Bible that says, uh, if you are faithful, I said, how, how can, uh, let me read it. I can't remember it. <clears throat> um, this is in Matthew 25, verse 14. It says, and again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servant and entrusted his wealth to him. Verse 19, it says that after a long time, the master whose servant returned and settled his account with them. His master replied, well done, you good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Sorry, uh, that wasn't the verse I was thinking of. <clears throat> um, here in Luke 16, this is the verse. Because this is actually a pretty important verse because it's this really does apply to us when I'm talking about being uh, faithful with little things. It says, whoever is faithful with very little, this is Luke 16, 10 through 12. Whoever is faithful with very little will also be faithful with much. And whoever is dishonest with little, he will be dishonest with much. So if you have not been faithful with worldly wealth, who will entrust you with true riches? And if you have not been faithful with the belongings of another, who will give you the belongings of their own? And I believe that, that in our own life is that when we're faithful with, in the place that God has put us, we're faithful through the difficult times. We're faithful in any circumstance. Uh, it says here in Luke that God, when we're faithful, God will entrust us with true riches. Like true riches may not be, I am now the prince of Egypt. But true riches are uh, the things that God um, that God sees as as extremely valuable. And if we want to be entrusted with those true riches, we want to be entrusted with uh, being able to um, lead others to Christ. We want to be entrusted with being able to uh, you know see people's lives change. The true riches that God has for us, like we need to be faithful in any. Uh, any circumstances that are in our, our life. Um, <clears throat> what point am I on right now? Number two, there's blessing when you walk in faithfulness. I want to tell just a really quick story about bless. There's, there's a verse in the Bible that it reminds me when uh, I talk about there's blessing when you walk in faithfulness, like kind of no matter what your circumstances are. But there's this verse in the Bible that says, um, the blessing of the Lord makes you rich and it adds no sorrow with it. Like we can be blessed and, and still be living in sorrow. We can be rich and still live in misery, uh, family issues, relationship issues, you know, all kinds of things in life that, that can cause us sorrow and grief. But um, it says the blessing of the Lord makes you rich and it adds no sorrow with it. I want to tell just a, a quick little story about my dad. Um, my dad is not like the greatest businessman in the world. Like my dad is just very faithful with, with what God has given him. And my dad never made good money. In fact, there was uh, many of you guys know, especially this older generation that there used to be a thing in church where 
they believed if you were going to be somebody in the ministry, uh, you had the, you were going to have the gift of being in poverty. Like the church was not going to pay you very much money, but it was like the sacrifice you were willing to make in order to work for the church. My dad worked for the church. Uh, I grew up um, very, very poor. And my dad never had a lot of money, but as my dad was just, and my dad was not like an incredible businessman. Like he, he wasn't like seeing, oh yeah, I could do this and I could do that. And I could own this business and make this money work for me. He wasn't like that. And we had always had enough. And we always had a roof over our head. And my dad got to the point where all of his kids were moved out. And me as a father, I understand. As soon as all of my kids moved out, all of a sudden I had money. I didn't. <laughs> all of my kids aren't moved out yet, but uh, <clears throat> all of my kids can attest to that. It's like all of a sudden we have a lot more money than we used to have. And I don't know what it was. Maybe it was like the, the <laughs> it was the, the 40 sports things that I had to pay for every year and the, uh, the books and the, all the other little things. But, you know, like all, all the kids moved out all of a sudden my parents had a little bit more money. And so they wanted to sell their house and they were gonna build a house like right near the church. Uh, we live, you know, not that far from the church but they wanted to build a house, honestly, in a terrible neighborhood. Like it was not a nice neighborhood but it was right next to the church. And they found this little piece of property that was for sale and they were going to build their I don't know, maybe dream home, but not, you know, it was not, it was just going to be a modest home. They're going to build this little three bedroom home. Well, they went and they got all the plans for the house that they wanted, this 2000 square foot house that they're going to put in the middle of 900 square foot houses. You know, my dad was not like the best businessman in the world, but he wanted to live close to the church. And so they bought this piece of property and they got the plans that they wanted. And it's just him and my mom, you know, so they're putting a lot of a lot of thought into like exactly what they want. And finally, my dad realized this piece of property that he purchased was not big enough for the house that he wanted to put on it because they wanted a rambler, like no stairs, right? So we're getting old, we don't want any stairs. And it wasn't big enough for the, for the house that he wanted to put on it. So he ended up, um, he had just sold his house. So he had, you know, a decent amount of money and he ended up buying the house next to him, which was like a 500 square foot house. It was like a little one bedroom, 500 square foot house, but it had enough property that he could take some of that property and, and build the house that he wants to. So he bought that house and he started renting it out. And then he was planning on renting for like the year and a half or whatever that it was gonna to take to build the house. And then he was like, you know, the price of houses is low. I can almost own a house for cheaper than I can rent one. So he ended up buying this little two bedroom house just a couple blocks away from, from the other house for them to live in. So now he owns these two houses. <laughs> He's building a house and all of a sudden the market, the housing market completely changed. So by the time that he moved into his house, all of a sudden these two stupid little houses that he bought were now worth something. We know how that works. You know, like when all of a sudden the housing market changed and within two years, your house is worth, you know, maybe back in those days, it was more like 50 or 60, $70,000 more than it was when you bought it. And now these two little houses were all of a sudden worth quite a bit of money. And now he was able to rent them out and he had his house and it just like, I'm not saying like it completely changed his life, excuse me, completely changed his life. But when you are living just faithfully, doing what God has called you to do, God puts you in opportunities of blessing in your life that don't add all the sorrow, that don't add all the grief. I put all my money in the stock market and I lost it all. I tried to do this business thing and there was grief in it. I had a struggle. I went through suffering. My dad, as he was just being faithful, doing what God had told him to do in any circumstance, all of a sudden he found a way. God finds a way to bring blessing in your life. 
And, you know, sometimes that blessing happens suddenly, as my daughter reminded me. This house, God brought a blessing suddenly for us because this used to be a 1963 uh, old house. And that fire happened in our house, which in some ways was tragic, but in other ways, we took the, we were able to take the insurance money and, and now we have this. Like God changed our house and our, even financially, this house is worth a whole lot more than it was back when it was a, a 1963 house. And God can change your circumstances very suddenly in the life of, of Joseph. One day he's in prison. The next day, he's the second in command in Egypt. In Daniel, one day, he's just a servant serving in, in the house of the king. And the next day, he's put in charge. One day, your circumstances are overwhelming you. And God is bringing you through those circumstances. And as you're being faithful in those things that God is putting you through, the next day, God changes your situation completely. And he brings you into a place of, of purpose. He brings you into a place of prosperity. He brings you into a place of fulfillment. And God can do that very suddenly in your life. One day, you're just being faithful with that $5,000 that this master gave you. That's all we're doing. We're just being faithful. He said, invest it. We're just making the investments. I don't even know when he's coming back. I don't even know when my circumstances are going to change. I don't even know when this will ever end. And he comes back. And the next day, he's in charge of 10 cities. You know, God has the power to change your circumstances in a minute and God will change them so that his glory will be uh, revealed in your life. And that was my third point is that God can change your circumstance. <clears throat> in that verse, if you guys want to know that verse in Proverbs 10, 22, in the Amplified Version, it says, the blessing of the Lord brings true riches, and he adds no sorrow to it, for it comes as a blessing from God. <clears throat> All right. That's going to be it for today. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but <laughs> I went through these notes. Okay. You know what? The, thought, the thoughts that I was having as I was reading through, I've just been reading through Daniel. I've just been reading through the life of Joseph. Um, I'm reading in Exodus right now. But uh, as God was just uh, sh kind of showing me even through those two stories, it's just that uh, God takes you through these very difficult things. Like you are in very difficult situations, sometimes like of no fault of your own, of no thing, no decision that you made. It's just because of life. It's just because hard things happen. And it's like, we thought we had some dream. We thought we had a dream of what we were going to be and what we were accomplished when we were kids. You know, we imagined our life to be a certain way. And just, you know, we imagined the family, we imagined the house, we imagined, you know, the the good life. And it just seems like things haven't got, gone the way that, that we thought they, they were going to go. And because of the circumstances of life, and there's a lot of hard things that happen in life, you know, the things that we don't plan on. And Joseph went through these difficult things, but because he remained faithful, God was able to use him to do the thing that he had called him to do. And as I believe that God is going to use each one of us. God has a plan for each one of us. God has a purpose for each one of us. He has things that he wants us to accomplish. He has people who he wants us to, uh, to speak into their lives. He wants to change 
uh, their lives because of us, uh, our kids, our, our, um, our friends, uh, our family members, the people that he's put around us, he wants to change them because of us. And as we stay faithful to him, we're able to accomplish that thing that God has uh, put it in our heart to do. You know what? When Joseph was 30 years old and he had spent 13 years going through this process, it was many, it was at least 14 more, or uh, let's say it was at least uh, nine more years down the road before he actually saw his dream come to pass. And it says, and God reminded him of that dream he had when he was a child because all of his brothers came and they were asking for food from Joseph and they all bowed down and God reminded them of the dream that he had when he was a kid. And as we stay faithful to what God has for us in our life, God will bring about those things. He will bring about fulfillment of the purposes. He'll bring about fulfillment of, of the plans, regardless of the circumstances and regardless of the things that we've been through. And uh, that's what God wants to do in us. Amen. 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 All right, let's pray. <laughs> Lord, I just pray for anyone here right now, God, that is uh, going through a difficult time. Lord, whatever that means, or maybe they've been going through it for many years. Uh, maybe they're just kind of stepping into something that is not going the way that they thought it was going to go. Uh, Lord, I pray that, that the enemy wouldn't come and speak into their mind uh, doom over them or speak into their mind that there's you can no longer fulfill the thing that you thought you were going to do. You will never, no longer have it, this enjoyable, this fulfilling life that God has promised to you. Uh, but I pray that you would um, right now just show them, Lord, that you maybe are taking them through a difficult season. Because when God takes us through a season of preparation, it's for the time that he can bring us to the place of blessing bring us to the place where he wants to put us in but sometimes it takes a little preparation to get us into the right place and lord i pray that uh, whatever circumstances that uh, some of us may be going through today lord that you will just uh, help them to be faithful lord and help them to uh, be able to make it through that lord i pray that they would know they would know lord that you are with them that if they're in prison they're going through a hard time with their family or they're going through a hard time with their kids. They're going through a hard time with whatever it is. Or that they would know, say, just like Joseph, through this difficult thing, but God was with Joseph. But God was with him. He was bringing him through it. And he was bringing him through it for a purpose, God. And I pray that everybody would be able to see that, Lord, the things that you bring us through. Lord, we don't want to waste these difficult things that we go through, God, but we want to go through them. And uh, we want to be able to use them, Lord, to bring you glory. Lord, we want to be able to use them uh, to bless other people, Lord, and lead other people to you, God. And uh, we just thank you that we can learn from, from your word, Lord, and, and you speak to us through it, God. And I pray that you would just uh, speak to somebody's heart a word of encouragement uh, this morning, Lord, encouragement to stay faithful or to stay doing the thing that um, God has put it on your heart to do. God, and stay uh, close with God, even through the difficult time. And when God brings you through it, he'll bring a, a time of, of fulfillment and purpose in your life that you would not expect. Lord, we, can, we know that you can change our circumstances in a moment. Lord, I pray that you would just prepare us the right way. Lord, that you would make us faithful. You would make us like those servants, Lord, who, uh, who didn't just bury the treasure, God, or bury the talent, Lord, but... Uh, but you, uh, those servants who were faithful to doing, uh, to, to increasing, Lord, what you gave them. I mean, faithful with what you gave them, Lord. Let us be faithful with what you've given us, God. Uh, Lord, I just uh, pray for encouragement of uh, anybody who's going through those difficult things today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.